Right, so here's some ballet flats. You can see in their earliest form. You can see the ribbons. You can see the satin on the top. And there were ribbons attached. So this is what the ballet dancers began to do. The flats had ribbon attached, and they also incorporated something really important, pleats. Pleats under the toes allow the foot to articulate. This stretches and spreads out, and then the dancer can point their foot and really start to move their metatarsals. And I'm going to ask Olivia actually to give a demonstration right now. She's just going to go, and I'm going to walk right over here and be right next to her. So she's in first position. I'm going to be in first position too. I'm just going to show you the difference. So you can see I'm trying to point my foot and do plies, and it's not so easy. So let's have her do that. Good. Thank you. So you can see it's much easier to stretch the foot and articulate and move. Thank you. <laughs> Some of the early dancers at this time thought, wouldn't it be very special and magical to rise up on the tips of our toes? May I have the next slide? <laughs> okay. Because of this choreographer, Charles Didelo, and his flying machine. So you can see, I don't know if you can see so well, but she's in a series of harnesses, and she would just sort of go up like this, and then they would pull her up and boop, 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 up away, right? So, but you can see it's quite a contraption, right? There's a lot of, she needs a lot of assistance to go up on point. Well, the audience just went nuts. They loved it, special effects. It's like when we see green screen something, and there people are flying and doing all kinds of crazy things. So it's the, it's the same thing. So the audiences went, you have to understand the internet didn't exist <laughs> during this time. So they went nuts. They wanted more of this. So the choreographers and the dancers had to meet these demands. Into the 19th century, the technical prowess increased, and the dancers tried to stand on point without wires. May I have the next slide? There were others before her, but Marie Taglioni was the first woman widely credited with being the first to dance in a full-length ballet on point. Her father, Filippo Taglioni, choreographed the ballet La Sofita in 1832, and he is largely responsible for taking ballet out of the stunt and acrobatic world and giving it this aesthetic all of its own. The shoes were hardly reinforced by today's standard. Just the barest darning. Darning thread is a very thick sort of thread, and they would just do this on the tip, and they would do a bit, and they would pad up their toes, but mostly it was the strength of their ankles and feet, and they could only go up and just linger for just a moment and come down. So you can see that we're getting a little progression here. We're going up and down, and I was wondering if Irene would help me out with this one. Right, now it's time. <laughs> so she's going to go in first. She has soft slippers on, so she's just going to go up all the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, and come down. Do you mind going up one more time? Good. And you can see, go ahead and come down. You can see she's really having to lift just for a moment and come down and lift just for a moment. And this is the earliest form of dancing on point. Thank you. That was very nice. <laughs> 